was always more of a Digimon guy due to how well I remember the shows being written, cheesy moments aside, and there were some genuinely heartbreaking and scary moments. God, Season 3 made me need new pants. Just, ah, uh, the frickin' D Reaper thingy, whatever the hell that is. Unfortunately, they never translated well to video games, as they were rarely ever good, at least what I hear about some of the world games, or complete crap. Fortunately, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth manages to break free of the curse, turning it into a fairly good game, with some problems here and there. Surprisingly, the story is very good, though starts with a slow-ass pace. The point is that the main character, whose gender you can choose and doesn't really matter at all, is given abilities to interact with the digital world and bonds with tons of Digimon. Together, alongside their mentor who is likely not wearing a bra, they must solve the issue of these creatures called the Eaters putting people into comas. So, wait, are they the phases from Dot .hack or something? Data bugs? Something similar. Like I said before, the story starts off really slow and does have quite a bit of annoying filler. But at the same time, it still provides a lot of entertainment and genuinely good character development. They are the narrative's greatest strength as they each have interesting plot ideas. Nokia especially stands out due to the bond with her Digimon, something I felt Arda and Yuko lacked. There were claims by the developers that they tried to appeal to a more mature audience, and they managed to succeed without constant swearing or boobs. And this is also the same game where poop is a weapon. Though the way the silent protagonist is handled is weird, as they can sometimes talk to themselves, but not really much to others, and their choices mean very little. If they're destined to act in only one way, why the hell would you go for a silent path? On the gameplay side of things, there are some hits and misses. The combat system is pretty simple, the right side showing who will go next in combat, and each unit can have a set number of skills and one or two unique moves. There's also a chance to team up and provide more attack or healing power, and when combined with special moves, it definitely reminds me of the old Digimon series. There are factors to consider as the game operates through a rock-paper-scissors mechanic with virus, vaccine, and data types. But then there's also elemental damage as well, so creating a varied team is both possible and encouraged. While you can have up to 11 Digimon on your journey, you will have a party limit meaning you can go with a small group of powerful types, or a big group of weaker Digimon. And much like the show, each Digimon can be classified and evolve into other Digimon, starting as a baby, then in training, rookie, and many more levels until Mega, or even able to reach another form past Mega with certain types. You can even combine certain Digimon to create new types as well. There's a lot riding on nostalgia, as you can create a lot of teams based on previous seasons of the show. Well, except maybe Frontier barring the villains. Whoops. The problem is that fights can be incredibly easy on normal mode. Sure, there's the occasional difficulty spike, but if you are smart in keeping your Digimon up to date, you'll be perfectly fine. Hard mode, though, is another story, and even then, defense-penetrating Digimon have more of an advantage in a fight as opposed to slowly willing an enemy down. And while grinding has its annoyances like stat restrictions, it's a great improvement over the DS games, which required specific experience values from different species. Yeah, that was not fun. It's still a slight pain, but it does keep me curious as to what Digimon I can use next. The game's farming system can help with grinding and stat boosting as well. You have a stat called ABI, short for ability, that with a higher number, the more stats can be increased through training at farms. There are many other factors to consider as well, such as tools, their type, and far more. The Digimon can even try to ask you questions from the farm and chat with you through the Digiline, which admittedly gets a bit annoying after a while, but it does keep them from feeling like mindless pets. And by constantly encountering the same Digimon, you can eventually convert their data and get that Digimon for your own. Even simply meeting a Digimon makes it easier to Digivolve. Dungeon designs get repetitive in terms of design, though they do at least look good, reminding me a bit of Shin Megami Tensei games. God damn it, now I want a Shin Megami Tensei and Digimon crossover now. The lack of a map, while it doesn't make navigation impossible, does make it annoying. As for the side quests, well, some can be interesting and have good character moments. Others are more annoying, like finding Digimon their special thing through one of the dungeons where it is randomly placed. Again, these aren't mandatory, but they are tedious. The final verdict is... Check it out. It's still a damn fun time if you are a Digimon fan, as the game nails what the series is ultimately about while exploring interesting character development. Even those new to the series might find something to enjoy. I'm the smartest moron, and I'm gonna pray we get next order. Please let us get next order. You're finally making good Digimon games. Thank you once again for tuning in for this quick review. On your left, you can find a quick review of Dishonored, a really good stealth game that I highly recommend. Or if you go on your right, you can go for a new episode of Saviors of the Tale, where I give a character analysis and summary, and this time, it's Homura of Senren Kagura. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with anyone else who might enjoy this. And until then, I'll see you at the next video. Take care.